Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A level maths. Here we're looking at forces and friction on a slope, so we can answer questions from exercise 5c. So these questions are really tricky, there are lots of, um, lots of forces acting on the same particle. A really clear diagram is really important for this question, so you don't get all muddled up with what the forces actually say. So, the first thing we need to do is, uh, with this question here we have a 2 kilogram mass, so we're going to put in a 2 g force acting downwards on an incline of 30 degrees uh, and the question here asks us to given that the acceleration is one meter per second squared um, down the slope uh, find the coefficient of friction between the particle and the slope so in this case then let's draw our diagram we're going to need this r force here because that gets involved with the friction force it's sliding down the slope so friction must then act up the slope Friction always acts, how do you know which way friction acts? It always acts in the opposite direction to the way the particle is moving. Um, so let's start resolving the forces then. Uh, for this 2g force here, we're going to have 2g cos 30. That's going to balance out with the r force there. And we're going to have 2g sine 30 acting down the slope in the opposite direction to friction. So, although we are trying to find the coefficient of friction, this does not change how we approach the question. We start first by finding the normal reaction. Then find the expression for the friction force, and then add this to the diagram. So, resolving perpendicular to the plane, we're going to see that R will balance out exactly with 2G cos 30, because we don't want any acceleration in this blue direction. The next thing we're going to then do is use this R value in the F equals mu R formula, friction equals mu R formula. So in this case here then, the frictional force is going to equal mu times 2g cos 30. So the force acting up the slope is mu 2g cos 30. So let's add this to the diagram then, we've now changed the friction force to mu 2g cos 30. And now we can use the information that we are, we are sliding down the slope at 1 meter per second squared acceleration. So resolving the forces going down the slope, we're going to have the downward force of the weight of this um, block here being 2g sine 30. Take away that frictional force that's acting upwards. So it's 2g, cos, sorry, 2G sine 30 minus mu, lots of 2g cos 30 equals mass times acceleration, that would be a mass of 2 and acceleration of 1. And now all we've got to do here is rearrange to work out what mu needs to be. So move things from one side to the other, divide by the 2g cos 30, and hopefully we're going to get a value in between 0 and 1. If we get 0 0.46 then that sounds like a good value of mu to me. Anything outside of um, anything outside of 0 to 1, be a little bit suspicious and just double check your workings that you've got that correct. So these are quite tricky questions. Make sure you've got a really clear big diagram. Make sure you're resolving, resolving perpendicular to the slope and then you're using that friction force. And make sure you've set friction in the correct direction um, and then your weight force going downwards as well. So your turn to have a go at this question here then. Pause the video and try this question out. Right, so let's have a go at this question here then. So first thing I'd need for this question is a nice, big, clear diagram. So let's go ahead and put this in. So first of all, we have a particle of mass 0 0.5 kilograms. So 0 0.5 g will be the force acting down there. My, um, my angle of incline is 15 degrees. So then my resolved forces are going to be 0 0.5 g cos 15 and 0.5 g sine 15. I'm going to have this R force, the reaction force, acting in the opposite direction to that. And I'm also going to have a force of magnitude P acting up the slope, trying to pull the particle up the slope. But unfortunately the acceleration is going to go down the slope by 0.2 meters per second squared. And the coefficient of friction is 0.3. So, in this case here, we have a particle that is um, 
that is uh, wanting to travel down the slope. So in this case here, we have friction as the force that's going to be acting up the slope. So we have two forces up the slope and one force of the weight force acting down the slope. So the first thing we need to do then is to resolve in the perpendicular direction to work out the value of r so that we can use f equals mu r. So in this case, r is going to equal 0.5g cos 15. So then the value of friction when I use f equals mu r is going to be 0.3 times 0.5g cos 15. And I can simplify this to 0.15g cos 15. Great, okay, let's carry on from there then. Now I can start to think about resolving up and down the slope. So let's give myself lots of space for this. This is quite a big equation. The only force going down the slope I've got is this 0.5g sine 15 force. And I have two forces that are going up the slope, so they both need negative signs on them. 0.15g cos 15 and this p force that we're not sure what that is. Uh, this is going to then equal, we've got an F equals MA equation here, so on the other side we have the MA part of the equation, that's going to be 0.5 times 0.2, mass times acceleration. So what we can do then is we can rearrange this equation a little bit, we're going to have 0.5 sine 15, 0.5 G sine 15 minus 0.15 G cos 15, take away 0.1 and that's going to give me the value for p. So I've just swapped around those last two terms there and then all that's left for me to do is to plug all of this into the calculator. So and then it's minus 0.15 times 9.8 times cos 15 minus 0.1 and my value for p comes out to be 4.2 newtons that's attempting to pull the particle up the slope. Okay, so that's how we do these types of questions then. So big diagram, make sure you work out R first because that's how you get the value for friction and then think about where, which direction your friction is traveling in. Um, yeah, okay, so pretty difficult questions. They do take a long time. A clear diagram is really important to answering these questions. All right then, have a go at plenty of the questions from exercise 5C. Have a go at those problem solving ones, the exam style questions. Ask your teacher for help if you need any. And thanks very much for watching.